The animal kingdom is huge and vast, but not all animals are created alike. In fact, no two animals are identical. Today we're highlighting some of the more unusual creatures that many of us never knew existed. Prepare to be alarmed, probably. From a fish with an unusual name to a moth nobody can find, let's meet the 20 strangest animals that are hard to believe are real. <sighs> Number 20. Eurekis unisinctus I know the name is impossible to pronounce, but I guess if you're really having trouble with it, I can offer you the more common name, the P fish. Yeah, the P fish. Look man, we live on an unpredictable planet, we should have expected the P fish would arrive eventually. When David Ford visited California's Drake's Bay, he never could have expected what he found on the shore. Thousands of severed P or so we thought. While David initially believed he had stumbled upon some sort of insane genital massacre, he quickly realized that they were merely 10-inch long innkeeper worms. But while the giant peanut party may have looked a mess to visitors, the local wildlife absolutely loved it. In fact, the seagulls had eaten so much, they could barely stand. I'll let you guys make up your own jokes on that one. It kinda says a lot about the state of the world, that the discovery of a beach filled with large peanut-like fish is barely acknowledged by the news or even the late night shows. You'd think they would have gone to town on the seagulls eating peanut fish jokes. Well, like the fish themselves, I think we've gone long enough. Let's see if the next animal on our list is weirdly genital related. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Venezuelan Poodle Moth Moths are just generally weird animals. Actually, I'd expand on that by saying that pretty much any animal that turns to dust should be considered weird, but the Venezuelan poodle moth? Especially strange. And yeah, it actually exists. We double-checked. In 2009, Kyrgyzstani zoologist Dr. Arthur Anker was taking photos of animals in Venezuela when he discovered this odd-looking thing. Dr. Anker took 75 photos of this animal, which was later officially named the Venezuelan Venezuelan poodle moth due to the physical appearance looking like a cross between a moth and a poodle. Those are two animals that seem destined for a hybrid someday, eh? Dr. Anker has long insisted that the animal is real, but the lack of information has led many to conclude that the whole thing is likely some elaborate hoax. Expeditions have since headed to the same region in hopes of finding the moth, but all have been unsuccessful. We have no idea if Dr. Anker was telling the truth or not, but I will say this. Of all the animals he chose to make up, a moth that looks a little like a poodle probably wouldn't have been on my list of guesses. If he made it up, the guy should consider himself some kind of career in kids' toys because... Oh boy, this guy's mind. Number 18. Dumbo Octopus in the classic 1941 Disney movie Dumbo, a young elephant bullied for his large ears discovers that they give him the incredible ability to fly. So you would expect that the Dumbo octopus has also found a way to hit the skies, right? Eh, wrong. It's just an octopus that looks a little weird. Join the club, buddy. The Dumbo octopus gets its name from the fact that it resembles the title character of said Disney movie. Specifically, they have a uniquely prominent ear-like fin that extends from the mantle above each eye, giving the appearance of extra-large ears. Sadly, they seem unable to fly, or at the very least, they just haven't quite worked out how to turn their huge ears into flight mechanisms. My advice is to just keep waving them until you eventually take flight. That's what seemed to work in the movies. The Dumbo octopus is a fascinating creature, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit disappointed by the fact that it can't fly. I I mean, sure, I can't fly either, and I have big ears, but, well, I'm human. What's the octopus's excuse? I rest my case. Number 17. Lowland Streaked Tenrec 
If you've never heard of a Tenric before, I'll warn ya, you're gonna be very confused in a moment. The Tenric is a very unusual and small animal that's both cute and just plain strange to look at. But we're gonna focus on the lowland streaked Tenric. This species is found throughout Madagascar in the tropical lowland rainforest, and it seems to thrive in just about every part of the forest. You can often find it on land, splashing around in the shallow water, or just digging around. I guess they like to make use of all the facilities. They're probably easiest recognized by the strange, spiky quills that can be found around the side of their heads. According to experts, these spines can detach when the animal feels threatened, an advanced technique to defend themselves against potential predators. Nice forward thinking there by… Uh, ev evolution. The Tenric is just a strange, unusual animal. It's a little like a leftover from the dinosaur era, but smaller and a little weirder. Should we be afraid of it? Should we hug it? Should we make a kid's cartoon about them trying to make it big in the city? I have no idea, but I do like the quill collar. It's very 1715. Number 16. Red-Lipped Batfish Every now and then you find an animal that is so loaded with red flags you don't even know where to begin. The red-lipped batfish is one of them. You shouldn't be expecting some kind of underwater vigilante superhero here. This is just a really weird creature. Let's be clear on this point. The red-lipped batfish is known for one thing more than any other. The giant red lips. I don't know which plastic surgeon worked on them or why, but I have to say it. The work is obvious. I'm sorry, buddy, but it gets stranger because this fish isn't even good at literally the only thing fish have to do. Yeah, it can't swim. In fact, the red-lipped batfish is known to walk on the ocean floor using their adapted pectoral pelvic and anal fins. A fish that's not good at swimming. Maybe the lips just weigh it down. The name may initially suggest a kind of Batman-like fish with maybe some lipstick. But no, this is much stranger. I guess it's like if the Joker tried to become Batman, but as a fish, and with big lips, and can't swim. This maybe is a terrible analogy is what I'm finding out right now. Number 15. Sunda Kalugo how many species of flying lemurs can you name? If you just said to, you both have too much time on your hands, and also you're wrong. Apparently there are more than two species, but for a long time, experts believed there were only two. The Philippine flying lemur and the Sunda flying lemur, also known as the Sunda Kalugo. The Sunda flying lemur can be found throughout Southeast Asia, but don't be fooled by the name. Just about everything in that name is a lie. Not only is the Sunda flying lemur not a lemur, but it also can't even fly. In fact, it just kinda glides while leaping between trees. Talk about false advertising. The creature is considered so valuable that it's actually protected by national legislation throughout Southeast Asia. Unfortunately, the increase in habitat loss, competition with other species, and local hunting continue to provide challenges to protecting the population. All that said, the Sunda flying lemur is still one of the most protected species in Southeast Asia. Because even though they're one of the biggest examples of false advertising you can hope to find in the wild, people really, really like them. Which is presumably why they keep hunting them. Make it make sense. Number 14. Kawadi Mundi I know what you're thinking. What the hell is a Kawadi Mundi? Rest assured, my friends, your friendly neighborhood voice artiste is here to answer all of your questions. Well, your one question. Basically, I'm going to answer a question, whether you want it or not. The Kawadi Mundi, also commonly known as the Kawadi, is a diurnal mammal native to South America, Central America, Mexico, and the southwestern United States. They are I think it's fair to say a little strange. A fully grown kawadi typically measures between 13 and 27 inches long from head.
to the base of their tail, making them a relatively small animal, especially when you compare it to a giraffe, but that's just your average coati. There's also such a thing as a mountain coati, and if you can believe it, they're even smaller than your average run-of-the-mill coati, even if you put it beside a giraffe. Despite their slight habitat differences, every coati looks more or less the same. While nobody's adopting these things as domestic pets, they're pretty much the same size as your cat. But again, probably not a great idea to take one of these things into your house, if only because, well, it's a wild animal. What are you, nuts? If so, I respect it. Number 13. Sparkle Muffin let me tell you in advance, I know the Sparkle Muffin sounds like the cutest, most adorable little animal you've ever heard of, but that illusion is about to be shattered quite quickly for many of you, because my friends, Little Miss Sparkle Muffin is a spider. I'm sorry, arachnophobes. The Maratus jactatus, or Sparkle Muffin, is a species of Australian peacock spider, and like just about every animal native to Australia, it immediately qualifies for for a place on the keep this thing away from me list. The Sparkle Muffin has the ability to jump lengths of around 50 times their size, and if that's not enough to make you feel itchy, I don't know what is. Surprisingly, these spiders have only ever been collected in the Wandul Range National Park in southern Queensland, raising the question of whether they exist anywhere else. I'm sure for many arachnophobes, the answer will be a resounding, please, lord, no. These spiders are called the Sparkle Muffin because of their unique coloring, and iridescent scales, but for many people, myself included, that'll just be an ironic name they want absolutely nothing to do with. Sparkle Muffin is the name of a cute and cuddly cat. Want to name a spider? Call it the Get the Hell Away From Me special. Number 12. Panda Ant Take your average run-of-the-mill ant and spice it up with a little bit of panda. What do you get? Panda ant! I know, it sounds like the opening to some weird 1990 Saturday morning cartoon, but the panda ant is a very real thing, and it's… Uh, it's interesting. In 1938, the panda ant was first discovered in the Chilean sclerophyll forests. It was quickly named for its unique coloration, which sees the ant covered in white except the eyes and with black and white spots everywhere else. But don't go thinking that the coloring is just some curious all-year-round Halloween costume. It's there for a reason, and that reason is to scare away predators, obviously. This ant has a most painful sting, of which nobody wants to be on the receiving end of. Not unlike pandas, actually. Have you ever been punched by a panda? It's not a fun time, even when it's just a man in a costume. The panda ant may be tiny, but it's certainly a mighty opponent. You're unlikely to see ants like these anywhere else in the world unless somebody is creating weird animal hybrids and I don't know about it. Honestly, I could believe it. It would not surprise me to find out that's happening. Number 11. Kinkajou Life in the tropical rainforest isn't easy, but then who claimed that it was? Well, I can tell you who would say that. The kinkajou. Unfortunately, the kinkajou is an animal and, as such, cannot actually speak, so let's just scratch that from the record. The kinkajou is a tropical rainforest mammal that's somewhat related to raccoons. It's also known as the honey bear, making it sound like a fun-loving Winnie the Pooh type creature. And sure enough, the kinkajou has never worn pants, so the evidence is starting to stack up. Contrary to popular belief, the kinkajou is not, in fact, endangered. It's just that it's strictly nocturnal, meaning people can't actually see them unless they're prepared to stay up late. And even if they do stay up late, they'll probably end up missing them. So that's unfortunate. But hey, at least we know they exist. It's currently unknown whether the kinkajou is related to Winnie the Pooh or not, but what we do know is that they're often, sadly, hunted for their skins and meat. Because, you know, humans like to be jerks to animals sometimes. We should add that these animals are not yet endangered, though, so it's probably only a matter of time. So there's a nice depressing thought. Number 10. Alligator Gar 
What's the biggest fish in the United States? I don't have an answer to that question, but I have the next best thing. A very, very big fish. This is the alligator gar, and it's pretty much exactly what it suggests. A giant gar with alligator-like qualities. Maybe with fewer murders. The alligator gar is easily the biggest species in the gar family, and is counted among the largest freshwater fish in all of North America. In fact, studies have shown that the fish can be traced back to the early Cretaceous period some 100 million years ago. That means they're one of what are commonly known as living fossils, because they're basically primitive fish. As for the name, well, they simply got that because they happen to look very similar to alligators, with their broad snout and long, scary-looking sharp teeth. While there isn't any recorded evidence that this is true, anecdotal claims have pegged the alligator gar as growing up to 10 feet long. Again, there's no credible reason to believe that's true, but also… and hear me out here, there's no credible reason to believe it's not true. Yeah, made you think there, didn't I? That's what big fish do. They really make you think. Number 9. Bill B. Take a deep breath, gather your thoughts, and prepare to meet the animal they call the Bilby. I know, it kinda sounds like the name of some obscure animated cartoon animal, but just trust me, there's a lot more to this animal than just wandering around singing songs. Long ago when Europeans colonized Australia, there were two species of Bilby, which also goes by the name Rabbit-Eared Bandicoot. Sadly, by the 1950s, the lesser Bilby had become extinct. Today, the greater Bilby continues to survive, but it's widely known to be an endangered species. On average, the bilby measures around 22 inches long, not including the tail. And as for where it gets that name from, the bilby has very long ears, which are often compared to those of a rabbit or bunny. Australia, man. Where else can you find animals like these? In case you're wondering, the bilby is an omnivore, which basically just means they'll eat whatever they can get their little mitts on, as they should. While there's no telling what the future holds for our little bilby, we can hope that they continue to find a way to survive and thrive, even in these dire times for the population. Number 8. Echidna did you know that, on our entire planet, only five species of living mammals lay eggs? That's absolutely true. Those species are the echidna, another species of echidna, a third species of echidna, yet another species of echidna, and, oh, the platypus. There's probably a better way to say all that, but oh well. Yeah, the four existing species of the echidna, also known as the spiny anteater, are among the only living mammals to lay eggs. These surprising animals live in Australia and New Guinea and have an evolutionary history that goes back some 50 million years ago. At that time, their ancestor was an aquatic creature, but thanks to evolution, the echidna adapted to an all-new life on land, which may explain why they're so easy to mistake for other anteaters or spiny mammals, but no. This is an echidna that we're talking about, and don't you forget it, much like the platypus. The echidna is equipped with electro sensors, which are used to sense burrowing prey nearby. Much like their biological cousin, the echidna just loves to eat ants, earthworms, and all manner of other tiny little insects. Even with 50 million years of history, they're still pretty much the same animal as they always were. You have to admire the level of consistency there. No veganism for this guy. Number 7. Tasmanian Devil. You know him, you love him. Taz is indeed one of the strangest, and I would argue one of the looniest Looney Tunes out there. 
It's almost hard to believe that he's even... Oh, wait, what? We're, we're doing the real guy? Uh, but I had a whole script. Uh, okay, fine. The Tasmanian Devil, the real one, is a carnivorous marsupial with a most intriguing... Uh, well, everything. For a long time, the Tasmanian Devil was only found on the island state of Tasmania, but that's not the case anymore. In fact, it's since been reintroduced to mainland Australia. And how's that gonna go? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. The animal is mostly known for its stocky, muscular build, and its extremely loud and often disturbing screech. And we haven't even mentioned the fact that it's among the strongest bites per unit body mass of any predator land mammal in the world. If you get bit by this thing, you're gonna feel it. And you may just go loony. Obviously, the cartoon version of the Tasmanian Devil is a little bit less terrifying than its real-life counterpart. You know, just a little bit, but it's most definitely an animal you'll have to see to believe. Now we just have to find a wisecracking rabbit and a southern rooster, and we can start getting the gang together. Number 6. Jabiru Stork the stork is, in itself, just a very strange animal. I mean, how many animals deliver human babies to their new parents? Answer, just the stork. It's a full-time job, after all. But the Jabiru stork, well, this one doesn't deliver babies. It's just kinda chills. The Jabiru is a large stork native to South America, but just because an animal is native to one continent doesn't mean that it stays on that continent. In fact, the Jabiru is often found wandering into the United States, everywhere from Texas to Mississippi. So, what exactly does Jabiru mean? It means swollen neck, because, well, do I even have to say it? It's generally frowned upon for any of us to accuse somebody else of having a fat neck, but, I mean, the necklace fits, you know? That's the Jabiru stork guarantee. The Jabiru is one of the more unusual species of stork, which is saying something. While it may not deliver babies in questionably packaged hanging baskets, it does something possibly more important. It has a fat neck. Okay, so it's not that important, but it looks weird and isn't that the whole point of this video? I think so. Number five, Hexalotl. Even the name sounds like something that I just made up, but trust me, the axolotl does exist, and if you can believe this, it has an even stranger name, the Mexican walking fish. Yeah, I'm being very serious. Axolotl doesn't sound so silly now, does it? Actually, the axolotl isn't even a fish. It's an amphibian. Upon first discovery, the species was found in several lakes, most notably Mexico City's Lake Xochimilco. Sadly, these fascinating animals are facing many struggles in 2020. Wild axolotls were near extinction due to the rapid urbanization of Mexico City and the water pollution, not to mention the introduction of invasive species that threatened the axolotl. And even when you venture into the wild, you won't find any more comforting news. They're listed as critically endangered in the wild because of deforestation and because they're often used in scientific research and sold as food. So not only is the axolotl an animal that many people aren't familiar with, it's an animal they may not have the ability to get to know, which is truly heartbreaking. Thankfully, conservationists and nonprofit organizations all over the world are doing their best to ensure that the axolotl gets a chance to survive and thrive. Let's just hope it works. Number 4. Leafy Sea Dragon Alright, let's get the elephant in the room out of the way. You're wondering if it's actually leafy or if it's a lie to. Well, they are kinda leafy, so sure, it's true. Or, you know, close enough. We'll go with close enough 
for now. The leafy sea dragon is a marine fish, and the family Syngnathidae, which also includes sea dragons and seahorses. So why is it so leafy? Duh! It has those long leaf-like protrusions all over its body. Of course, they're not actually to be used for swimming or movement of any kind. In fact, the leafiness is really more for camouflage than anything else, a way to disguise itself against predators. In Australia, the native homes of these animals, they're commonly known as leafies. And the country is so proud of their curious little leafies that they've made them the marine emblem of South Australia. Because of the risk of extinction, Australia has often highlighted the leafies as a focus for local marine conservation efforts. They're determined not to lose their precious little guys. Well, after we've highlighted them in our video, let's hope they feel extra motivated. Save the leafies. Save the leafies. Number 3. Lilac Breasted Roller it's not often we get a chance to discuss the birds of sub-Saharan Africa, but when we do, well, we're gonna take that chance. The lilac-breasted roller is not just any bird, it's the Kenyan national bird. Also, it has a bunch of names, like a bunch. The Coraceous caudatus, the fork-tailed roller, the lilac-throated roller, Mosilakatsi's roller. The names just keep on coming, but don't worry too much about the names. This animal is only widely distributed in sub-Saharan Africa, and you're probably not gonna see it anywhere anyway. Well, unless you specifically go hunting for it. You see, the lilac-breasted roller likes to perch conspicuously on top of trees or other high vantage points. So while the tree may spot you, the likelihood of you spotting it first, uh, well, the chances are pretty low, honestly. But that may be a good thing since they're surprisingly aggressive, particularly during breeding season. So, yeah, you may never see a lilac-breasted roller in person, but it's always fascinating to know such an animal exists. And just to remember that the world is a very large place, and we're pretty tiny in the grand scheme of things, so there's some existential dread for you. Number 2. Naked Mole Rat some of you are going to make dirty jokes about this animal, and honestly, I understand it. The naked mole rat doesn't look like many other animals. It's hairless and strange looking, and it's pretty much built for the underground world and the underground world alone. Could you tell? The naked mole rat, or sand puppy if you don't like the concept of naked animals, is a burrowing rodent native to East Africa. Again, this is an animal built for one environment and one environment only, the underground. How well built is it for that environment? The naked mole rat is an ectothermic or cold-blooded creature. which lacks pain sensitivity in its skin and has a low metabolic and respiratory rate. They can last a shockingly long time, and they're resistant to cancers and oxygen deprivation. So, yeah, they're pretty much built for a life in an underground cave away from the sun, wouldn't you agree? The naked mole rat may look like a sight for sore eyes, but it's one of the most unique and unforgettable creatures on the planet. Still, it's also one of the many creatures you don't want to see after dark. Just take it from me. An unexpected picture of a naked mole rat is not pleasant. Number 1. Pangolin not all anteaters are born alike. For instance, some have scales, hence the name scaly anteaters, or as they're better known, pangolins. There's no animal on Earth quite like a pangolin, except as we've established uh, anteaters. But we've established this is not... Okay, we're just going in circles, and if we keep going with this, uh, we're not gonna get anywhere. Let's look at the animal. The pangolin are mammals found in Asia and Africa, and they are 
curious little things. The species vary in size from between 12 to 39 inches, but there are additional extinct species whose size we just don't know. So what do we know? Well, we have a slightly strange connection to these creatures. Pangolins have large keratin scales, not unlike fingernails or toenails. But while we only have them on our fingers and toes, these animals have them all over, making them the only mammal to do so. In terms of their diet, you don't have to worry about being eaten by a pangolin. Not only are they significantly smaller than you, but they're only interested in ants and termites. Trying to feed a human to a pangolin would be like taking a vegan to McDonald's. Nobody's going to enjoy the experience. What's the strangest animal you've ever seen? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff, showing up on screen right now. See you next time.